all right good morning good afternoon good evening i bless you in the name of jesus christ how are you doing today god bless you now in this video we're going to be looking at our five pastors the prominent amongst them will be apostle johnson Sudeman, apostle arome Osai, prophet sadhu sundar Selvaraj. now the the issue i brought you already a video where Suleiman said um people who are correcting should at least have had about 50 years experience so this is a doubling down on the same message that he preached on the same attack and correction that he aimed at the person of Aaron Mosai. now um somebody even in the comments was trying to speak for Suleiman that Suleiman did not say Hubert Angel left the pulpit but that I was trying to twist it so uh thankfully he is going to say something that relates to that now this video is coming from I think it's a Zoom question and answer program that was conducted. At least Suleiman was the one, the host, or the one that was hosted it as a guest or the host. I don't know where it was done. So somebody asked a question and he gave an answer. Let us look into it first and foremost. Don't be too fast to leave because Arome has an idea on what is probably being targeted and what is being promoted with all these things that is happening. Stay tuned. You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. Papa, sir, the Lord bless you, sir. Sir, please address the issue of ministers constantly attacking other ministers. Wow. It is discouraging us. But some other young ministers seem to like it. Mm ministers attacking ministers okay now let me say something <sighs> many people see this this wave of pastors attacking pastors is a strange fire in the body of Christ it's wrong it's a strange fire what happened in the days of God's generals was competition, not attack. There were silent competitions. The word of faith was competing with the word of healing. Okay? Jack Cole, who was one of God's generals, would send people to go and check the size of the tent. Because then they didn't preach. They didn't have um, buildings. They used tents. To go and check the size of the tent of another healing minister. And to say it's 10,000. Then we built 10,005 so it can be bigger. So it was more of competition, but not verbal attack today there's verbal attack it's a strange fire in the body of christ and it's not of god it's not of god there are four things i'll tell you number one many people who attack have their own personal weakness they are critical it's a spirit in them they are critical very critical it's a weakness they have forget all they are trying to spiritualize it when you see a preacher who has attacked one minister two three four five those ministers are not the problem he is the problem he may be a man of God. Now, don't get me wrong. That a man of God has a weakness doesn't mean he's not a man of God. That a man of God is um, quick to attack others doesn't mean he's a man of God. But don't follow that part of him. Because as water flows through a pipe, some of the particles on the pipe flows with the water. You need wisdom to avoid those particles and just hold on to the water. It's not every action. You, any action that does not align with the Spirit of God inside of you. So many of them have that weakness. They are very critical. So they now try to spiritualize it. They add, God told me. They give you a scripture. But that's their weakness. Because in Romans 14 verse 12, the Bible says, Every one of us shall give account of himself. You will not give account of another minister. There are four wonders in heaven. When we get to heaven, there will be four wonders. The first wonder is the absence of those we thought would be present. And the second wonder is the presence of those we thought would be absent. Don't forget, the absence of those we thought because while they were in this world, they acted like they were God's first cousin. The absence of them in heaven. The presence of those we thought would be absent. Some people we see now, as far as we are concerned, they are not even born again. Their appearance, their ladies, you see them, they paint their fingers, paint their face. As far as you are concerned, you say, this one doesn't know God at all. You'd be surprised they have a relationship. Have you seen Katrikuma? She will put on big earrings. We judge people too much. Leave them with God so there are people who are critical by nature number two it's an attack from hell satan comes in uses the church to fight the church so we must resist it it's an attack from hell 
Number three, there can be a prompting on a man of God once in a while to address a wrong. But it's not a ministry. It's a prompting. It can come once in a very, it can come once in two years of ministry. And number four, those who are attacking ministers, what is their, what is their testimony? Before a man of God begins to attack another man of God and you listen to him, what is his testimony? How long has he been in ministry? How long has he proven his ministry? Before we listen to you attacking people, you must have a long track record. If somebody like Pastor Adeboye, that the Chiyo, comes to speak about something, we will listen. Because he has a proven track record over the years. At least 50 years is okay to prove a ministry. 50. I know you are going to say, Apostle, but the Bible says, out of the mouth of babes and suckling. Finish it. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling, thou hast ordained praise, not correction. He ordained praise, not correction. He didn't ordain correction from babes and suckling. So don't quote the scripture emotionally. He ordained praise out of the mouth of babes and suckling. Okay? So we must be careful. You can never get it right by attacking the minister. You always miss it. I saw somebody, um, um, a video, somebody sent it. And what, he just said, uh, he sent something and wrote something. I can't remember. A minister was talking to about another minister who was um, involved in the national crime, according to him. And he says, since that time, that minister has not left the pulpit. He's still preaching on the pulpit. He's still ministering. He got it wrong. That's what happens when you are consumed with bitterness and hatred. Because I know the person, I think, I think I know the person he was talking about. And the person he was talking about, when something happened to him, he left the pulpit for five weeks. It was his son that was preaching for him. I was one of those he reached out to he said be with me in prayers he reached out to some other ministers i even felt he was reaching out to people too much because he was just pray for me pray for me that's all he was saying so this person was in a remorseful state praying but nobody's going to come out and hold the microphone not, that's not everybody's style not that's not everybody's style there are people the lord will not even want them to do that that's what so what he did by saying that minister did not withdraw from the pulpit he lied unconsciously but that's what happened when you are overwhelmed with hatred once you are overwhelmed with hatred for a man and bitter towards the man you keep getting it wrong so let's focus on what god has called us to do the next question all right so the man said what he said there and he gave his reasons and doubled down on people he pleased to correct those who may have run ministries for like 50 years and then uh, i guess that such people may be only in this country now could only be persons like Pastor Adeboye and Pastor W.F. Kumui. I don't know how long the winner chapel uh, Josh has stayed. So if he's not up to 50 years in ministry, he doesn't have the right to speak. Now, before we move to what um, Arome would say. Now, what I don't really understand is that um, he himself also, in, by, by doing this, is also trying to correct and attack a person because he doesn't like what the person is doing, the person has done. One of the things he said was that those who attack, and but I really don't see this as an attack. I don't see, you know, making reference to an error as an attack. Attack is only, you see, even Satan, Satan that is called the accuser of the brethren. If we must tell ourselves the truth, Satan doesn't lie against the brethren. Satan only uses what he probably influenced the brethren against the brethren, influenced the brethren to do against the brethren in the presence of God. So the question we, we ought to ask is, these things that are being pointed at, most notably now by Apostle Arume, and maybe if you like, point at someone like me. Now, are those things true? Now, if they are true, are they right? If they are right, are there people who have seen those obvious errors that might think those things are normal? Now, if there are, there are people who have seen those things, now, the question is, how would it affect them? Would it affect them positively or negatively? Are there persons that will just swallow those things, line, hook, and sinker, because it came from a popular man of God that they respect? Now, these are the questions that we put forth. Now, it is not about, you said it is, you know, their personal weakness. That person has personal weakness. The problem is with the person. And then going further, he acknowledges that some persons can, you know, sometimes, not always, now, make some corrections, speak out some things. But I think that the problem he has with Arome now is that Arome has not passed off for 50 years. And the issue now is, the question also is, has he passed off for 50 years? Because in doing what he is doing, he's also engaging in the same thing he is accusing Arome of. Now, I guess that the problem he has is because he probably has been, has been also uh, touched indirectly. His friend has been touched indirectly. Now, when he said the man lied, Arome lied unconsciously. That is an indictment. It is an indictment. Now, if it's injured that he said left pulpit for five weeks. Now, like the last video I brought to us here, 
Liberty Angel, every statement he made publicly after that incident never showed of a man who truly was remorseful, full of what he did. Now, but I will not stop this video here. Before we go to Arume, we're going to listen to uh, Prophet, the, I mean, the Indian pastor, many of you will know him, that who, uh, Sundar Sevaraj, on the same matter, on the same matter of, you know, calling those who speak out against ills being agents of the devil. Let us listen to him. Or oh, as working for the devil, sorry. Uh, uh, from, you know, those things is promoting a, a, a satanic subtle attack on the church. Let's listen to Sadhu Sundar Selvaraj. And the Bible says very clearly in Revelation chapter 12 that we will also fight against the enemies of God. So if we are going to fight against the enemies of God, of course with spiritual weapons, still the engagement is in human terms so you need to how to fight we have the sword of the spirit in our hands you need to know how to wield the sword of the lord if we do not know how to wield the sword of the lord instead of striking the enemy we will be striking one another like we are presently doing right we are killing one another among the Christians, more than we are killing the enemy. Those are ideas from demons who give you those ideas to shame God's people. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, of judgment and of righteousness. He doesn't shame us. Like what we, we are doing today, no? So, don't criticize anyone. Don't gossip, don't backbite anybody even if they have genuinely done a mistake it is not your duty to criticize if you find someone making a mistake even if, if it is me come and talk to me that's the godly thing to do not post a video on YouTube today they say oh the Holy Spirit inspired me to write a, against someone on the internet those who do that claim that they were inspired by the Holy Spirit have you heard like that before? Sure, you were inspired by a spirit, not the Holy Spirit. That's true. You were inspired, it's true, but not by the Holy Spirit. Now, my question would always be, see, there are several people who are out there and they're operating as pastors. And he, he, as a person, I remember, at, at one point in time, criticized some of these African prophets. Persons like Bushiri, he did. And he called him false prophets. I think I should allow you to watch that video. The governments in Africa, various nations, are coming very hard on false prophets. Because these false prophets are really coming up with weird doctrines. Some false prophets are telling their congregation to eat live snakes. Yes. Eat live snake and they make the snake bite them. Because the scripture says, you shall take up a poisonous snake and nothing will harm you. And one pastor who keep on doing that was eventually bitten by a cobra and he died. Right in the church service. He took a cobra and said, look at me, look at me. And he made the cobra bite him and he died. And the government stepped in and they closed the church. And then there is another prophet who goes around telling the church, all of you are the sheep of the Lord's pasture, therefore we should eat grass. Seriously, scouts honor. And you know, the pastor leads the whole congregation outside the church where the fields are. He says, come on everybody, go on your feet and eat the grass. The church believers literally obeyed what the pastor said. They eat the grass. The worst of all this, now even this can be excusable. The worst is the number one greatest false prophet in the whole of Africa. A man called Shepherd Bushri. You have a water, can I have a water bottle please? He has a bottle like this with a red liquid and the title is Blood of Jesus. He sells that in the church, the blood of Jesus. And he tells the congregation, this is the real blood of Jesus. So, because of all this kind of weird stuff, the governments are coming hard on the false prophets to safeguard 
innocent people. I don't know what made it right then and what makes it wrong this time. It was right for him to do it then because he was convinced that these people were not representing Christ. And I have not seen any other video, any video where he came to retract that thing that he said. So it's like he is also going, you know, through the trend. I respect the man. I respect him a lot. And he is following the trend of things happening now. Thank God. Thank God. He didn't say the Lord told him. All right. He didn't say the Lord told him, but he is speaking. I've seen some, some prophecies he gave out Russia attacking uh, uh, America. You know, he gave his long time ago. And I've seen a caption where Hubert Angel gave the same prophecy again a few weeks ago. So I do not know if he has any relationship with Hubert Angel. So if he do have, if he does have a relationship with Hubert Angel, we might begin to look at it that hey, it might be because of the relationship he has with Hubert Angel, and this thing is going on that makes it you know like this. Now the thing is that if a, a preacher is so much attached to another preacher and will react negatively like uh, Suleiman is not letting off because Hubert Angel has been poked and touched and maybe he himself has come under several you know attacks of those things anytime he speaks he must want to bring in a statement that will kind of give a background create a background that the things that have been said about him are untrue I'm not going to say I accepted that true or not uh, that's not what I'm saying but then we, we, we it becomes a concern you know when because of the person you are attached to you don't want to look at the things he is doing and ask yourself a question if those things are truly right because you are under this person as a as a as a as a, a follower you like him a lover of the person but then when those things are done when those things they they have done is being questioned you two don't have the ability the mental capacity to reason please reason independently and ask yourself are these things right is it right this thing that this person has done is it right so now we don't have the authority to question pastors like this like the one that gave his um his members petrol to drink in the name of deliverance maybe some of you you don't believe that this is fuel if you can look at that fuel it looks like apple juice but it's not so I'm turning it into a pineapple juice. I'm turning it into pineapple juice. The world is upon it. Oh. You want to drink pineapple juice? <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Is it nice? The one that was feeding them with a snake in those days in South Africa, he hypnotized them and made them to eat grass. He walked on them and rode on them like horses and called them his sheep. Follow me, sheep. Follow me. Follow me, sheep. All my sheep come. My sheep. My sheep come. All my sheep. Be a sheep. Be a sheep. All my sheep. All my sheep. Be a sheep. Now, his congregation, humans, you know, dehumanizing people. The one that was asking people for money, if they don't give him money, they will die. Now, so because they are projecting the name of Christ, we should all accept them that they are all, they are all one. So there is no need to talk about it. There's no need to criticize it. There's no need to point these things out. Now you see a pastor that is being carried shoulder high on a chair. She's wrong. So you don't talk about it because if you talk about it, you are working for Satan. Now tell me who, who more is working for Satan? Which one is damaging the body of Christ, the faith of believers the more? You know, is it that the people who are looking through the lenses of the scripture to point out some, some things that are not right, to tell people outside there, in case you are not a Christian or in case you are new, or in case you are old, but you don't know the difference between your left and your right. This is not part of Christianity. This is not how Christianity is viewed. This is not part of what Jesus taught us. So that you don't think it is it is that way. Living people, people of course, in Africa, in the world, some persons worship the person they love, they follow, most especially if the person is a public figure. That is why a woman that is married and call her pastor daddy can leave her house and come if the pastor says she should stay in the church for seven days 
without going out, she would do it. Even if she is working, she'll find a way of, of you know, freeing herself from the body of work, take permission from, from workplace, and she wouldn't even mind if she will be fined in the office to be sure that she is obedient to the instructions of the pastors. Why? Because they think she thinks that the pastor has spiritual capacity of knowing what she could not know, seeing, you know, farther from, you know, what she could not. I'm not saying that these are not possible. But then at the same time, that woman that would help her pastor, in fact, carry her pastor's bag. And if her pastor maybe mistakenly steps on a mud and is stained, she wouldn't mind to use her own clothes, her wrapper, to clean the dirt on her pastor's shoes but at home her husband is a nobody she doesn't respect the husband now this is a problem that we have in the church so do we now say okay it is okay now this will lead me to what Arume says and we will hear from other people because it's like these guys are promoting ecumenism let everyone come together leave everyone let them just do what they are doing as long as they are calling god as long as they are calling jesus it is okay whatever they are practicing is all right so you are not supposed to speak out the other day recently i brought you a video of a so-called pastor who edited the killing and the beheading of a member who was his secret um bedmate so if you talk about uh, about them you are actually fighting the gospel you are fighting jesus you are an agent of the devil listen to what Arum said in ecumenism we are not of the same sort we don't worship the same god we don't subscribe to the same principles we are not operating from the same source we don't have the same values but so that we, we it will look as if we are one let us unite somebody's an easy mo. he has an altar he dance dances to the spirit naked in the night oh, 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 oh. But ecumenism will recommend that it is in our interest to be one. But if we try to subscribe to ecumenism, you will discover that what will drive our civilization will be the loss of the mixed multitude. Under such circumstances, the mixed multitude will become powerful, more powerful than the original lot. Uh, now, because the owner of the channel where I saw the video first, you know, ask the question whether Jesus was wrong when he prayed that God should make them one. Jesus did not pray that God should make the apostles and the world, the unbelievers, the hypocrites, the Pharisees. The Pharisees were, were worshipping God too. They were making sacrifices to God. But Jesus did not pray that God would, should make the those who believe in him those who believe in the in the movement he was establishing make them one with those of other practices he was praying for the present church that he was founding at that you know point in time and the church to come and that church is not the crowd that church is not an all comma thing it's not you know however it is wherever whatever you do don't worry just come jesus had had a clear picture and the clarity the clarity of what jesus had in mind was epitomized in the apostles their work with christ how they served him without compromise how they served and loved the lord with you know a lot and enough commitment and consecration that was the church that jesus was praying for that they should be one jesus is not you know was not praying for uh you know the oneness of any kind of, of of thing that goes on in the church we should not speak about it because you are afraid that it will polarize the church now i tell you jesus even said that he did not come to bring peace on earth it is it is the antichrist that will come to bring thick peace he said he has he came with the sword to turn the father against the son the mother against the daughter and how would that be now the word of god will divide you know the closest of friends because when the truth of the word of god is spoken some hearts will accept it and some will not accept it so if i'm accepting it and you're not accepting it or you're accepting it i'm not accepting it of course we won't be together again if you are truly born again if you're truly a child of god you have repented i want to tell you that the friends you had before you became born again have all left you because you have a different confession now you have a different faith now i talked about the 80s when people were truly born again when people were you know would originally normally give their lives to christ in spirit and in truth once that happens there will be division in the family the family members will rise against them now there are those who are watching me now who can attest to this who can attest you know tell us how much they suffered please you can put down in you put it down in the comment section if you if you faced that kind of discrimination because you gave your life to jesus i'm not talking about the christians of today i'm not talking about the christians of maybe late 90s talking about those of early 90s 80s 70s you gave your life to jesus christ did your family members clap for you i told you a story here how i was part of those that went to carry my sister from the, the church she joined because 
she was talking about born again born again born again born again and every other thing that we're doing not we we're we not idol you know worshippers but her confession the new faith she found she was so zealous about it and she was not saying any other thing that was strange but that everybody should repent we were religious we were practicing religion all right but she felt like she had found the light but we were like no you cannot leave the family church and go to another church thank god that that seminar i, I left the family church you may be offended it doesn't concern me so Let's, let's, look, let's listen to this people. Ecumenism. The word ecumenism or ecumenicalism is not found in the Bible. The concept, however, is, and it's not a good one. Ecumenism is the principle of promoting unity among all Christian churches, regardless of denomination or doctrine. While it sounds like a great idea to get along, ecumenism denies the importance of uh, doctrinal distinctives. The only way for true ecumenicalism to work would be to forget about faith in the practice of the Word of God. Ecumenicalism, uh, ecumenicalism finds its fulfillment in the seven-year tribulation period where uh, there is a one-world government and a one-world religious system under the Antichrist. Shalom dear brothers and sisters, welcome to this Bible study about the dangers of ecumenicalism. Now ecumenicalism is something which is becoming increasingly popular in these last days. It's basically the idea that uh, Christians and churches and denominations, even other religions, should be uniting and partnering. Now, this is something which is openly taught by the likes of Rick Warren, who teaches that uh, we should be uniting with other religions and partnering with them in order to bring in world peace. Um, but I want us to look at an example from the scriptures where there was an attempt at this interfaith ecumenical movement. Turn please to the book of Ezra, chapter 4. Now, just a brief background on this particular chapter. The Israelites, because of their sin and idolatry, had spent 70 years in captivity in Babylon. The uh, Israelites went into serious sin and idolatry and as God's punishment he sent the Babylonians to destroy Jerusalem and they burnt the temple to the ground and the Israelites were exiled into Babylon where they spent 70 years in captivity as prophesied by the prophet Jeremiah in chapters 25 and 29. Uh, when the 70 years were finished the Israelites returned to the land of Israel um, to rebuild their temple. However, during the time that they were away from the land uh, the land of Israel became populated by the Assyrians, the, the pagan Assyrians who were brought to the land of Israel by the king of Assyria. So when they returned to rebuild their temple, they, they found that there was many um, Assyrians in the land and they basically lived amongst them whilst they were rebuilding their temple. Now, let's read Ezra chapter 4 verses 1 to 3. Now when the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the people of the exile were building a temple to the Lord God of Israel, they approached Zerubbabel and the heads of fathers' households and said to them, let us build with you, for we, like you, seek your God, and we have been sacrificing to him since the days of Esau Haddon, king of Assyria, who brought us up here. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua, and the rest of the heads of fathers' households of Israel, said to them, You have nothing in common with us in building a house to our God, but we ourselves will together build to the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. You have nothing in common with us. Oh, we've been sacrificing to your God. We believe in your God. No, you have nothing in common with us. Now, the Israelites here were obviously recalling the words of God in Exodus chapter 23, verses 31 to 32. I will fix your boundary from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines and from the wilderness of the river Euphrates, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand and you will drive them out before you. You shall make no covenant with them or with their gods. Likewise, Joshua chapter 23, verses 6 to 8. Be very firm then to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, so that you may not turn aside from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you will not associate with these nations, these which remain among you, or mention the name of their gods, or make anyone swear by them, or serve them, or bow down to them. But you are to cling to the Lord your God, as you have done to this day. Even though all these pagan worshippers claimed to have believed in the God of Israel and claimed to sacrifice to the God of Israel, the Israelites refused to have anything to do with them. The Israelites refused to unite with them. You have nothing in common with us. Now, this is very different to what we see now, isn't it? They want us to unite with churches who pray to the dead. They want us to unite with churches who bow to the Pope. They have nothing in common with us. They want us to unite with churches who say that Jesus was an angel or that Jesus was the brother of Satan. They have nothing in common with us. They want us to unite with churches who ordain sodomites and say that it's okay for men to marry men. They have nothing in common with us. The Jesus of the Catholic Church is not the Jesus of the Holy Bible. The Jesus of the Mormons or the Jehovah's Witnesses is not the Jesus of the Bible. Whatever happened to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4? For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, 
or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it readily enough. Anyone can make up their own Jesus in their own minds, a Jesus that they're comfortable with, a Jesus that suits them, but it's only the Jesus of the Holy Scriptures who can save anyone from the fires of hell. Now, if it's not enough to want us to unite with imposters masquerading as Christians, they also want us to unite with other religions. They want us to partner with religions who say that God has no son and that a paedophile like Muhammad is greater than Jesus Christ. They have nothing in common with us. Okay, um, thank you if you're still here. I will say any other thing. God bless you. Let me just leave it to you to tell us in the comment section. Should we allow all these things? Somebody will quote to me that Jesus said, allow the tests and the weeds to grow together. Allow the tests and the weeds to grow together. Now, but he, you, you remember he said that the harvest is plenty. The field is ripe, but the harvesters are few. The laborers are few. So it is actually the time of harvest. So we must separate the, the sharp, I mean the tests, from, from the weeds. This is the time. The enemy has planted this thing. It is not today that the devil planted this wickedness in the church. And it has actually grown. What you are seeing now is the fruit of the tares. The tares has, yeah, they have grown and they are trying to shook the wheat. So it is the time that harvesters should begin to separate the tares from the wheat. How be it in righteousness, not with bitterness. Uh, Suleiman was accusing Arabic of being bitter, of, of having hatred. But I don't think it is so. I don't think i don't think it is about hatred it is about passion it is about conviction it is about knowledge it is about standing for what is right but our word today will disparage anybody that has a different opinion from the rest of them outside there thank you so much and god bless you let's know what you think about this stay blessed stay rapturable stay focused don't allow anybody to distract you distractions are real distraction is out there but stay focused on christ jesus Tell everybody to know that no man is my standard. No human being born of a woman is my standard. Jesus, the word of God is my standard. I love every pastor. I respect every pastor. But I don't take everything that, that they say. It's not all of them. It's not all of the time that they are right. Many times they have, the flesh speaks. Just like I know that I cannot be right all of the time too. No man is always right. God bless you. I'll be seeing you in the next video till then. From me to you. Shalom.